Hello, welcome back to the Iron Squid Group H, where we are currently seeing Thor Zane and Violet tied one and one. And they're going on to game number three, and we are yet again seeing the um, rather interesting Infestor counterattacks, both having some success in game one and not having success in game two. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Thor Zane doing a pretty, I mean, he, he stabilized, but there was also moments in game number two where Violet just went for the big wins in the engagements in the form of those Infestors trying to go for the uh, command center where he could have just gone for SCVs and tried to equalize things up. But again, he would have lost a lot of Infestors. So that's a tough situation to recover from as a Zerg. Yeah, definitely. I mean, those Infestors are the essential linchpin to the defense pre-Hive. And down in the bottom left, having shown a variety of different openings, everything other than the norm from Team Evil Geniuses, it is Thorzane. And spawning up to our top right-hand corner, as our Red Zerg, after having the series equalized up for him, he goes by the name of Azubu Violet. Hmm. I wonder what he's going to bring up here. Yeah, I'm really hoping to get the chance to see um, this sort of non-standard play from Thorzane. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he's gone for mech in the first game with a lot of rapid expanding. He went for no early third command center in the second game. Rather, he went for this very fast marine hellion push, which, again, I'm, I'm thrilled to see. And I would once again hope to see some sort of aggression out of him. And, wow, Thorzane with the proxy barracks! Oh, my God. Well, Check I mean... It out. It's funny because, you know, Thorzane's been mixing it up quite a lot recently, and it's more often on this map than any other from Macro Terrans that I see two barracks. So I think that Terrans just do not like this map against Zerg. What's your opinion on that, Sean? I actually think that this map is one of the most unique maps in the map pool, and it doesn't have that at first glance because you think, oh, really easy to get three bases, burn. Burp, derp, derp, and you just call it a macro map. However, it's actually surprisingly close distances by ground. Opens up opportunities like this, where we actually see double barracks play working, because I can both put on pressure, but then simultaneously retreat back to my base and expand behind. I would anticipate the Orze not to even commit that many SCVs to this particular push. We also see that with all the counter-attack pads in the late pieces of the game, this push actually eats into Zerg's ability to um, do those sorts of counter-attacks. Yeah. Just due to the fact that we're cutting away his really early third, we're cutting into his drone production right off the bat to prevent him from having those big mineral heavy forces in the mid game. Ooh, actually, oh, he's going to bring four SCVs from home with this. So he's already got two wow. at the front here. Wow. I think he might try and block this entire off. He might go for three bunkers. I mean, that's one thing on this map that is very, very scary. But look at this, Violet is reacting well. He's bringing so many drones to try and combat this aggression. Wow, and it looks like he's even trying to get ready to build some kind. Wow, what an excellent oh. wraparound there by Violet, managing to get uh, a good chunk of those units right off the bat. The Marine count is dwindling, and Violet is making this look so easy, Kalaris. He really is. I mean, Thorzen right now is up to 170 uh, minerals, so he can try and start throwing down bunkers, but Zerglings are already out here. And, I mean, with the drones, if he pulls them off as well, there's only two Marines for DPS. Violet has done a great job of shutting down Thorzen. I mean, Violet is absolutely demolishing this push. Yeah. I mean, Thorzen just doesn't ever seem to have enough Marines, and they're finally getting the Marine count to a reasonable number. But what does Violet do? Oh. Just picks off the SCVs with ease, continues to follow these Marines. Violet knows that the push is done. Thorzen is in an absolutely horrific situation. I cannot believe how easy Violet made that look. And the drones still killing off all of the Marines once again here. It's 13 workers to 12, so Violet. But the big thing here is the fact that Violet now has two hatcheries and with two queens on the way in comparison to Thorzen that has no second command center. So and I had to use ominous voice for that because it's yeah. really not so good for Thorzen. Yeah, I mean, Thorzen doesn't even have any defense back home in the main. So he's forced to build these extra barracks there. He's even forced to continue to build out of these barracks, which further shuts down his options. And what does Violet do in response? Violet's just building a spine at home, expending one drone, and then he's oh. going to be building only drones from here on out. So Thorzen really has to have some big answer soon. Yeah, and that big answer is going to come in the form of a second wave of aggression. But the Zerglings, they're on the way. They might actually spot these two barracks. 
Oh, uh, oh, Violet, you're shutting down everything, and he has to cancel the boat! Oh, God, that's so terrible! <laughs> oh, oh, Kalaris, it, it stings. It really does. And that now, oh, Thorzane is so far behind. That's, that's, that's physically painful to watch, right? You get what I mean? It, I mean, physically painful is actually, I think, the best possible description. I mean, it... It stings. It's like when you watch one of those skateboarding videos and a guy trips and racks oh. himself, and you just curl in, and you're yeah, like, no! Oh! I mean, just seeing that cancel when it's that far from being done, I mean, it, what are the options even for, for Thorzing at this point? Oh, and look at this. Violet thinking a bit like, what? well, what the hell's going on? Because he didn't see the two barracks, so he threw down an extra two spine crawlers thinking, well, I guess maybe some aggression's coming because I didn't see a command center either. So, in essence... Because Thorzain showed his opponent nothing and put himself a little bit behind after doing that, uh, Violet overreacted wildly to what was going on. Uh, he didn't realize that, yeah, Thorzain was just that far behind. I mean, this is, this is brutal. I don't know how else to put it. It's brutal, but amazingly, Thorzain has figured out a way to pull the supplies back together. But again, it's one of those deceptive situations where it's not quite as accurate as we're seeing because, I mean, these little counterattacks from Thorzane are virtually impossible to deal with. I mean, <laughs> he's getting delayed as command center. He's using more SCVs. I mean, Thorzane can put on a little bit of pressure, but it's the difficulty of this positioning with the barracks. It's comfortable enough on this map that it's good to do two barracks plays but when it gets shut down that hard it feels like a million miles away oh and we now have a bailing nest on the way for violet here so violet after seeing what he's seen with the zergling poke forward and seeing not that many scvs at his opponent's natural might end up going for some aggression here he certainly has the option especially now with 20 zerglings on the way this might couple up really nicely with speed and we could see violet getting very very serious yeah, I mean, this is where we're really starting to see that leap ahead in supply from Azubu's Violet. And, oh, going for the Baneling Nest. I mean, <laughs> it's like you said, Kellars. Violet is not going to mess around. Mm. He's not really thinking to himself, oh, time to go to the late game. He's like, oh, well, if you didn't have any gas until recently, I'm probably up against only Marines. The mm -hmm. best you can do is a barracks wall-off. And I don't see a barracks wall-off. Mm. So... Da -na -da -na, ba -na -ba -da. That's from James Bond, by the way, and that generally plays when James Bond is in trouble, Kalaris. It does, it does. And this is all of these get this this entire series is just echoes of the show match we had before. I mean, Thorzane is going double engineering pay and three command center, but can he yeah. actually shut down this aggression with this wall that is so many banelings, they're gonna rip down that wall so quickly. This is, I mean, you imagine how quickly Banelings take down Ooh. barracks. Well, what about half-built barracks? Even faster. See you later. The money 18 number of Banelings doesn't even need to expend all of them to get that wall off Ooh. down. There's the good game. A painful, brutal final match from Thorzane. But, you know, this is the similar sort of thing that we have seen out of Thorzane in recent times. His play is looking really, really good. Mm -hmm. The results aren't going up, but look at this. Thorzen used to be the guy who would do the same one build every game and rely on these epic, long, slow macro games. And here he is with three entirely different styles. Yeah, it's it's impressive to see. And, you know, once a player like that finds the stability in, in mixing it up, then they become ridiculously strong. One of the players that ended up doing that was Naniwa when he was at the peak of his GSL, um, getting two round of... Was it round of eights or round of fours? It was round of eights, right? Uh, yeah, two round of eights back to back. So good. So, I guess we'll be going on to another uh, next series in just a little bit, Sean. Yeah, well, I mean, got to give credit to Violet. We've been talking a lot about Thorzane in the last two games, but Violet, holy crap, is he good at holding off a variety of things while still putting on pressure. And most of all, it's thrilling to see that a player like Violet, who breaks so many norms of Zerg play, is doing so well, just hot off a second-place finish at IPL5. An incredible, incredible achievement. Let's see how he can do heading into the rest of Group H 
game number two. Who are we going to be seeing, Kalaris? Oh, it's going to be Delphi versus Nesty. Nesty in his standard environment for ZVZ. We'll be back after the commercial break with some ZVZ action. See you in a bit.